Hello, and welcome to this video all about the amazing Brentum Scheduler component. Join me as we walk through how to get started with the Brentum Scheduler component inside of your Angular applications. Let's get to it. Here inside my IDE, I've already bootstrapped a new Angular project using the command ng new and then giving the project name. And by the way, I also chose no for the question about routing and chose to use SCSS. With the project set up, the first thing we need to do is make sure we have access to the Brentum NPM registry. We could do that for just this project with a .npm rc file. Here we're saying anything with the Brentum namespace should come from the registry at this URL. If you wanted to use Brentum products globally, that is across many different projects on your machine, you could run this command. npm config set, and then in quotation marks, the same exact string that we provided in the .npm rc file. Finally, we should log in to the registry. For our username, we can provide the email that we used to sign up for our Brentum account. However, there is one crucial difference. For this context, you need to change the at character out for two periods instead. If you are a trial user, your password will be the word trial. However, if you're a premium user, then you'll use whatever password you set up in your Brentum account dashboard. Next, we'll need to install the scheduler core library. That is at Brentum slash scheduler. Or if you're using the trial version of this package, then you'll need to append dash trial to the end. Then you'll also need the Angular package for the component. That's at Brentum slash scheduler dash Angular. Now we can boot up the dev server and over in the browser, we should see the bootstrapped Angular page. And that's exactly what we get. Let's display the scheduler component now. Inside of the source directory, app, and then app.module.ts, I'll import the Brentum scheduler module from the Brentum scheduler Angular package. Then inside of the imports array here, I'll register the module. Next, over in app.component.ts, I'll import the scheduler component from the package and then register it under the name scheduler component. Finally, let's configure the component by first getting the scheduler config type from the core scheduler library. Then we'll use it to define a configuration object with some values that will make sense for the data we'll work with in just a moment. Lastly, let's provide that configuration object to the class so that it's available to the template. Now that the component is set up, let's remove all the boilerplate code in the template and use the Brentum scheduler component instead, passing it the desired configuration. Great, this is getting there. We have some times on the side of the page, but we don't have any styles yet. Absolutely no worries. The scheduler package provides those for us too. And there are several different themes available. We'll use the one called material by importing it in app.component.scss. Next, over in app.component, we'll need to set the encapsulation so that the app won't use its default encapsulation only for components that contain a Brentum component. Now, by default, the component is configured to take 100% of the parent DOM element with a min height of 10 ms. For your application to show the component with the appropriate size, you could, for example, make the parent components take the full height of the screen. That would look something like this inside of the styles.scss file. Over in the browser, things are looking a lot nicer. We have the scheduler component displaying with styles, there's this nice heading at the top describing the day of the week that we're looking at with some times just below it. But here it says that there are no records to display. So right now everything is pretty empty because we aren't keeping schedule of anything. 
So how do we go about passing in event data? Well, there are two different options for this. We could use some data that we happen to already have available locally. Or we could use the scheduler's CRUD manager to load the data in from a remote location. Let's go with the CRUD manager for this video. First, we'll configure the CRUD manager in the scheduler config. It takes a couple of different properties. One, the load URL, which describes the URL that we want to make the request to to fetch the data. We'll just point ours to a dummy JSON file to simulate an API endpoint. Then we'll also provide the auto load property in order to say, go ahead and load this data immediately. Next, we'll pass that on to the component inside of the template. The CRUD manager is now set up, but we don't have the actual data in place for it to fetch. So inside of assets, I'll create a new file called data.json and paste in some dummy data. In a real life app, of course, this data would probably come from your REST API. By the way, you can check out this guide in our documentation under Guides, Working with Data, and CRUD Manager to learn more about how to format this data. Over in our app, this is starting to look like a really nice scheduler. Let's go back to the IDE and take a look at the data to see how it's actually powering this view. We start out with a success property, which just lets the CRUD manager know that this was a successful response. Then we have a resources property, which we'll come back to in a moment. Then lastly here, there is an events property. This is an object with a property called rows, which is an array of all the different events on the schedule. So each of these objects represents one of those events you saw in the browser. They have an ID. They also have a resource ID, which connects the event with the resource in this data property above. We'll get back to that in just a moment. It also has a start and an end date, which are obvious what they do. It has a name, which displays as the label for the event. You could also customize the icon, event colors, and other things there as well. So what exactly then is this resource ID. Well, this is what connects the event to a resource from this array here above. A resource simply describes the things that you're making schedules for. This is a list of people, so maybe we're scheduling work shifts or activities for different family members. You'll notice though, right now, none of these resources make any impact on the output of the scheduler in the browser. All you see right now are the events. Let's fix that with the columns configuration object. In our scheduler config object, let's create a property called columns. This will be an array of the columns that we want to appear on the left-hand side of the scheduler. Each column will have a text property, which gives the label of the column header, We'll call this one name. And then there is a field property. This is given a key which matches up the column with the data inside of the data.json file. So we'll call this one name. And you'll see over in data.json, this lines up with the name property on each resource. Finally, we could also customize the width here. Let's do the same thing for age. With the configuration set up, the last step is to pass it to the component. Back in the browser now, beside the events on the left-hand side are each of the different resources, so we can tell which events belong to which individual. Out of the box, we are able to click on the different column names in order to sort them by that column. So name goes in alphabetical order here, the same thing with descending, and it works with numbers such as age as well. In conclusion, this is just a brief introduction on how to get the Brentum scheduler set up for your Angular application. There are still plenty more you can do with this amazing package. 
things like customizing the context menu when you right click on an event, or customizing what fields display in the event editor when you double click on an event. Be sure to tune into subsequent videos to learn just that. In order to dive even deeper into getting started with the Printum scheduler, you can check out this Angular tutorial within our documentation. It's found under Integration, Angular, and Quick Start. Also, if you visit the Guides portion of the docs, you can get even deeper into what all this amazing component can do. These aren't all necessarily in the context of an Angular app, but they can be easily adapted for your use cases. So from here, the world is your oyster. You now have the ability to go and make amazing scheduling interfaces in your own applications with the power of the Printum Scheduler.